Let's return back to the rheology of blood. So blood consists of, blood is not a homogeneous material, it consists of plasma, certain blood cells, the white blood cells, and a lot of red blood cells. So besides that, there are other things that are probably mixed in the plasma, but this is what you get if you separate blood, for example, in a centrifuge in a tube. So it turns out that the plasma is remarkably Newtonian under the conditions found in the body. For example, 37 degrees Celsius, moderate pressures, but the blood itself as a whole is remarkably non-Newtonian and it has been attributed to the special characteristics of the red blood cells also known as the erythrocytes. So the rest of the cells probably and the rest of the constituents probably also play a part but they're relatively small 1% of the total volume or mass and uh, the major effect is due to the plasma and the erythrocytes or the red blood cells. So the separation of blood or fractionation as it is sometimes called is done usually done in a centrifuge and there are many tubes of blood samples placed around the centrifuge in these slots here and one of the arts of doing this or that one can learn quite fast uh, is to balance the centrifuge so that uh, you can do it safely. If the centrifuge is not balanced, then uh, it can make loud noise or shatter the tubes and blood will be everywhere. After separation, the blood will have this plasma layer. That's the clear layer. And then the red cells layer and the other cells, including the white blood cells, that is the thin layer between the red and the plasma layers. So after separation, it's easier to test these materials separately for various tests. If you look at the plasma portion of the blood, it's mostly made of water. So if the whole blood is made of plasma and cells and platelets which are called in the book formed elements. So the formed elements are about a total of 46% out of which the majority are red blood cells and then there are some white blood cells and platelets which are about 1% of the total. So the remaining part is plasma and within the plasma water makes up 50% of the total volume of blood. So the blood is 50% water, which makes up like 90% of the plasma. And then there are proteins mixed within the water, dissolved in the water, and ions like sodium ion, potassium ions, um, and then there are other constituents. So this diagram is for an adult male and for a female, the cells is approximately 4% lower. So there's even more uh, water and ions and proteins uh, as a percent of the total blood volume in females. The dynamic viscosity of plasma at 37 degrees Celsius, that is body temperature, is about 1.2 centipoise or equal to 1.2 millipascal second. So if you look at the dynamic viscosity of water, pure water, at different temperatures, you'll see that at around 20 degrees Celsius, it's about one centipoise and if you go to around 37 or 40 it's about 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 centipoise. 
So you can see that the dynamic viscosity of plasma is greater than that of water, pure water, and that is because the plasma contains many proteins and ions. So although the plasma is 90% water, its dynamic viscosity is different than pure water, but it is still a Newtonian fluid. Moving on to why the blood has non-Newtonian characters, and it is due to the unique properties of the red blood cells. So this electron micrograph shows red blood cells, and you can see that the red blood cells are biconcave. For example, there's a red blood cell here. So if you take a cross-sectional view of the cell, it has a disc-like shape but with a depression in the center and if you look at it from the top view it's, it's approximately circular but with a depression near the center. So this allows the red blood cells to stack up so if you have a red blood cell here and another red blood cell here you can form these columns for example here you can see that the red blood cells are stacked like chips and uh, this is called the rouleau formation or the roulet roulex formation so the rouleau formation is what allows the red blood cell to provide the shear thinning property that we will discuss in a bit So when the blood is not flowing and it's stagnant, then the red blood cells arrange themselves in these stacks or the rouleau and this means that the blood is very thick. It can support a lot of shear stress. So if you try to flow it a little bit or if you have a small pressure gradient and you're establishing a small flow, the plasma within the blood will have to resist the so almost solid property of these pillars of red blood cells forming a network in three dimensions. And this means that the there will be a large shear force supported by the uh, small velocity gradient. So let's say you have a velocity gradient, du dy. So there's a small velocity gradient, du dy, but there will be a large shear stress. So the dynamic viscosity, effective dynamic viscosity will be high. Now, as the system or as you increase the flow, then this rule will get um, dismantled and the red blood cells will separate out. So if you increase the flow, then the red blood cells will now be on their own, separate out. And in fact, they will arrange themselves to be flat uh, along the streamline. So if they were uh, opposing the flow like a kite opposing the flow then it will be unstable so if the flow is going this way and the red blood cell is staying like this then it creates a lot of uh, pressure on the red blood cell so any slight disturbance in the flow will make it such that the red blood cell will flip and the flow can pass much easier across it so that will create a effect where the red blood cells are all arranged along the direction of the flow as the flow speed increases. So as the flow speed increases, we'll have the shear stress within the material will be more like plasma and it will be the effective uh, dynamic viscosity will be lower for higher flow. So higher flow means higher flow rate 
and also higher uh, strain rate, higher velocity flow and higher strain rate. So there's some interesting videos uh, of blood flowing under a microscope. I provided the links to these videos um, in the website. There is another effect mentioned in the textbook of why the shear thinning occurs in blood. So when the strain rate is low, there is random orientation. When the strain rate is high and the flow rate is high, the red cells are aligned along the streamlines of the flow.